guten Morgen und willkommen zu unserer wöchentlichen Tourismus Namibia Show, die wir ja jetzt bereits seit einiger Zeit jeden Samstag Ihnen bringen. In dieser Woche haben wir ein sehr volles Programm, vor allen Dingen, weil wir auch das Glück hatten, ein Interview mit dem Umweltminister führen zu dürfen. Es ist natürlich in Englisch, aber wir hoffen trotzdem, dass Sie der Sache folgen können. Aber zuerst kommen erstmal die, unsere Topics der Woche. Ja, mein Name ist Frank Steffen, ich bin der Redakteur von der Allgemeinen Zeitung, schreibe natürlich auch für die Tourismus Namibia und bin für die zuständig. Ähm, allem voran, äh, denke ich, ist die gute Nachricht, dass wir uns als Verlag entschieden haben, selbst wenn es im Moment noch nicht so doll aussieht, ähm, dass wir die, die Tourismus Namibia, die erste Ausgabe, jetzt wieder bringen und zwar gleich Anfang Juli. Es geht uns ganz einfach darum, dass der Tourismussektor einfach wieder entfacht wird. Leute sollen merken, dass es wieder losgeht. Und es geht ja wirklich los. Wir haben in dieser Woche, haben die Zeitung ja alle darüber berichtet, unser Umweltminister. Also wir haben ja insofern nicht nur einen Umweltminister, es ist ein Minister für Umwelt, Forstwirtschaft und Tourismus. Hat auf jeden Fall in dieser Woche gleich nachgezogen, nachdem Präsident Hage Geingob schon angekündigt hatte, dass wir ein Programm haben werden, mit dem wir den Tourismus wiederbeleben wollen. Nur gut, dann hat der Minister nachgelegt und so sieht es aus, als ob wir mit Luftbrücken das Ganze bewältigen wollen. Das ist also nicht unähnlich, wie man es in Europa auch machen möchte. Also ich hoffe, dass das wirklich auch klappt und dass, dass der Minister da die nötige Unterstützung nicht nur vom Tourismussektor bekommt, denn ich bin mir sicher, die werden ihn unterstützen, aber dass auch unsere Besucher aus Übersee wieder Freude dran haben, so etwas mitzumachen und unser Land zu besuchen. Ja, und dann hatte die Republikanen hatte gestern noch einen Artikel drin, der ist auch ganz interessant. Franzis Steinberg hatte sich so ein bisschen eingeschossen auf das Thema Elefanten und Wilderei in Afrika. Und die erfreuliche Nachricht war eigentlich, dass wir immerhin im vergangenen Jahr nur zwei Elefanten an Wilderei verloren haben. Es sind immer noch zwei zu viel, aber immerhin ist es schon mal eine Besserung. Ja, und jetzt im, im, im Anschluss zu diesem kleinen Intro haben wir dann natürlich Destinations Namibia. Ja, yeah, some good news this week. I think uh, we all read about it. It is really good news. The, um, the Ministry of Tourism is seriously looking at how to open up the tourism industry again. They are uh, looking at uh, air bridges, similar to what uh, we all saw in the news for Spain and Italy and so on. And uh, when I spoke to the minister, he actually said the idea is to allow people who are healthy to come over into our country. They obviously need some form of pre-clearance and whatever. And then at the end of the day, when they come here, they don't need a 14-day quarantine. Because I think that's the biggest obstacle in, in trying to get tourism going again, because nobody will go and leave for, for four weeks and spend uh, two weeks in, in quarantine, return home and enter for another two weeks of, of quarantine. So it is a bit of a problem. So let's hope, uh, let's hope they find a solution to it, because I think it's easier said than done at the end of the day. So, but let's see what happens there. Uh, then, if you look into Republican uh, of, of Friday edition, you will see that there's a bit of uh, good news in terms of uh, Namibia not having lost as many elephants to poaching as in the past. That I found quite interesting. And the COVID? No, 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 generally for the past year. Oh, the year? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so they, they gave an update of the report of elephant poaching in Africa. And Namibia, in that context, only had lost two last year, which I think is very good. Yeah, that is yeah. good. And then uh, finally, just a little reminder that in another 10 days' time, we will, for the first time, resume publishing our Tourismus Namibia again. We've got a couple of nice issues uh, and, and, and themes in there. Uh, Chloe obviously took a, uh, approached it a bit different this time. Instead of always just concentrating on Namibia, we bring you a bit of an idea of what it is like if you were to approach Namibia as you come from the Cape. So, uh, yeah, welcome news there. So in another 10 days time, you can read all about it. And that's already the, uh, the, what I wanted to tell you in topics. Uh, next thing, we've got uh, destinations. <coughs> Thank you.
Yeah, destinations is where you come in. Yeah, I think this week actually the first topic won't really be destinations, but it's more just to invite you to come on, onto our Instagram um, platform and have a look at what we share there because a lot of what we speak about and a lot of the images that I post and things like that are not only my own but also of locals who travel the country and actually know the country better than than anybody else you know and so we love to feature your stories and to share tips and tricks and insights and a lot of the stuff isn't really what we share in our magazine or even in these live broadcasts because I mean obviously we take so many photographs but also just to invite you if you're interested to get involved in our broadcast because we actually would love to be able to interview and share your stories almost like we are around a fire just chatting about your experiences or things like that and so yeah so just get, uh, pop us an email or DM us on our Instagram and, and we'd really love for you to be, get involved because I don't know there's just so much there is the platform local tourism is lacquer and we share a lot of the um the discounts My and perfect. specials that they have at the moment um which which really i think we should be taking advantage of and so um just you know if you have any more that you'd like us to include this is a collaboration at the end of the day i mean yeah. we all love namibia as much as one another and um just to celebrate the beauty of namibia and you know share the deals and share as some of the best experiences I've had, I've, I've got from private messages from, from you, like giving me secret campsites here and there, which I think is really the charm of, of travel, really. So and this is really where we're going in the future anyway. I mean, Chloe knows that um, we, we're busy looking at how we can revamp our internet site as well. Um, so the idea is eventually to have you land on a, on a map, even if you want to, and uh, then you can actually have a look at the routes that we've previously traveled, number one. And number two, always uh, we'll try and uh, give you some ideas of where you can stay, whether it's camping or whether it's, it's glam glamping is the big thing yeah. these days and whatever. So whether it's accommodation or camping, that doesn't matter. You, you've got the choice because at the end of the day, our idea is to promote tourism as a whole. So we don't have a specific... A mission to just promote the one above the other so um. and even once COVID is over we don't want locals to ever feel as though you know their opportunities to travel are only now that their specials on you yeah, know exactly. there are so many special parts of Namibia that you know that are available all year yeah. round so follow us on Instagram that would be we'll leave a link in the description so yeah, and send us photos like we always said we always have our picture of the week and you're welcome to send us a nice photo and we can uh, put it in here as part of the show. Yeah, and then you wanted to tell us about uh, Jackalberry. Yes, um, another very interesting um, camp, actually. It's a tented camp in the Mamili um, National Park, which is just on the backwaters of the Linyanti. And um, the main section of the, of the camp is actually built in and around a large Jackalberry tree. And um, sorry about the jumpy footage, but <laughs> just <laughs> to get to and yeah. from, you know, you're driving through muddy puddles, but the bird life there is really unbelievable. Yeah. And actually the elephant as well, because um, obviously that's their, that's their pathway um, to and from Botswana. So yeah. they, um, the, uh, the elephant sighting, sightings are incredible. And there you can see it's, it's really beautifully. Really nicely done. Yeah. yeah, it's really beautiful. And you really get the sense that you are immersed in nature, which I mean, it's all part of the experience. You clearly had a visit to there. Yes. No, but I must say, um, one of the best spots I've been to for bird sighting, they offer a very beautiful um, sunrise um, bird viewing trip. But even the way that they've built the, the camp, it's kind of very much using the organic materials around and um, really clever use of things like plastic pipes for lighting which you'll see just now it's i don't know i just find it very unique and very um but it's a it's a tented camp and and in uh, i mean it's less a travel than Amelia national park so you really do feel you don't see other cars you know there you can see yeah. those lights are actually made from plastic pipes which okay. they've decorated and you see a lot of namibian jewelry made out of the pipes but okay. i just thought it was beautiful how yeah. they yeah. So, yeah, and you have just these, I mean, in, in, during the um, rain season, this would all be flooded with yeah, water. Yeah, I just wanted to say, this is like a 
Uh, you won't easily see this again in, in the foreseeable future, not if the rain continues the way it was this season. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. true. But I mean, it's just a, it's another highlight, I would say. Um, Absolutely. The whether North. there's water or dry, it is always beautiful. Yeah. And we were constantly surrounded by elephants. So, you know, animals, you know, actually you probably see more of them when it isn't rain season yeah, because yeah. they come to the spots that there are water. Yes. And then... Um, Another kind of unique experience, um, Nambwa, they don't do it all the time, but they often, for those of you who are interested in um, yoga and kind of... That's me typically. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> I mean, I, I can just imagine Frank sitting there, but it was such a special experience because the monkeys were all in the trees around us, almost copying our movements. I mean, I was an observer, just like the monkeys, mm. but you can see that they were just <laughs> looking down on us. Like yeah. it was such a special experience, but very peaceful because it's right on the water's edge as well. But what Number um, is quite good at doing is um, having dedicated um, trips specifically for yoga enthusiasts. And so this, for example, is what they would do um, if you book to do a yoga session in your room, but they actually do take you out into the bush and do it inside inside the grass and things okay. when they do do groups specifically dedicated to yoga but um it's just you know it's uh, when you're surrounded by nature but i think they were eyeing the tray of food there more than anything <laughs> yeah. else if i'm honest but um no very special and so just keep an eye out i think number are quite good at posting um about when they have these yoga retreats and things like that. But it's, it's when you are surrounded by so much beauty and they are the only lodge, um, African monarch lodges um, inside the Bobwata. Yeah. So you really are completely um, on your own, you know, with the elephant pathways I all around you. I think that's the big thing about uh, some busy region. No matter where you go there, you, you fall off the beaten track quite fast. Um, you know, you've got the main route going through that area, but that's where it stops then. Especially actually in the Bobwata, because there there aren't lodges or campsites everywhere around you. You know, they're they're only two very private, and and even it gives you the chance to see more animals and wildlife because they aren't interrupted by constant cars, yeah. at, like at um, Itasha, for example, with a constant mo movement of vehicles. Yeah. So, and that's that's what we're also trying to promote in our next edition is is. There's so many places, and, uh, and, and I actually spoke to the Minister of Tourism about it as well. I, for example, uh, since I've been up in, in Novemberland and looked at what they've got to offer, I fell in love with that place for the simple reason I'm, I'm much into wild camping and, and mm. just doing as I please today. I, if I see a nice spot, I want to remain there. And, and, and there are still many places like that in Namibia where you can actually enjoy that. Uh, Kaukoland is also one of those areas where you, you off and away and nobody uh, starts interfering. Best thing is just switch your cell phone off. And, and you actually don't even planet. need the ablution facilities. Exactly. I mean, all you need is your bry and, and then just dig a hole. I yeah. mean, seriously, that's the best way to yeah. experience Africa. So yeah. we'll be bringing some of those trips to you as well. But um, yeah, yeah, I think, no, that's, I think that's the all four destinations today. And now I hope you've brought along a bit of patience because it's quite a lengthy interview. But still, I think it's also a, a good interview to have had simply to get the view of the Minister of Environment, Forestry and uh, Tourism. So up next, we've got to the point. Ja, willkommen zurück und äh, wie Sie sehen, das ist meine Freude mit Chloe Dürr hier zu sitzen, denn ähm, sie, sie macht wirklich schöne Fotos und, und bringt auch immer wieder neue Ideen mit rein. Es wäre langweilig, wenn Sie immer nur lesen müssten im Tourismusmagazin, was Frank Steffen zu sagen hätte. Ähm, so haben wir auch von verschiedenen Leuten mal Beiträge und wie gesagt, in der kommenden Ausgabe ist das auch wieder so. Die kommende Ausgabe äh, haben wir dann so äh, ausgerichtet, dass wir anstelle immer nur in Namibia zu berichten, sondern einfach mal den Weg hierher beschreiben. Also da geht es dann auch des Weiteren darum, dass meinetwegen, wenn man als aus der Übersee kommt und man würde in Kapstadt landen, wie kann man sich eine schöne Tour vorbereiten entlang der Westküste bis hoch rein nach Namibia und dann anschließend wahrscheinlich immer noch die, die normalen Urlaubsziele anfahren, die, die wir hier überall haben. Aber so, so würde man sich den Süden mal angucken, statt immer nur den Norden. Ich meine, nicht das mit dem Norden ist ja nichts verkehrt, aber wir haben mehr als nur die Etoscha-Pfanne in diesem Land. 
Ja, und dann, wie gesagt, jetzt als nächstes hoffe ich, dass Sie ein bisschen Geduld mitgebracht haben, denn es wurde dann ein viel längeres Interview, als wie wir dachten. Also hier ist uh, To The Point das Interview mit Minister Prohamba Schifeta. Okay, so now we start. One, two, three. Good afternoon, Honorable Minister. As you can see, okay. viewers, uh, we've got an interview scheduled with the Honorable Minister for Environment, Forestry and Tourism. Honorable Prohamba Schifeta, thank you for having us. Thank you for making the time for us. Um, we are obviously not here to have hard and fast interviews. This is about Tourism in Namibia, our special show where we try and promote our Namibian uh, tourism sector, which is obviously in turmoil at the moment. Uh, Minister, maybe you want to comment on that, uh, on, on what is waiting for us in terms of budget and what you've got planned? Yes, thank you very much and uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, our plan of course, given that uh, we have to use the resources we have, the little resources we have, but we want to complete uh, major projects, and uh, we can do that uh, um, because our plan has been that uh, we have to be prudent with our financial resources and uh, all our resources in order to make sure that we we go a, 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 a mile, uh, a major. Act, we accomplish uh, major activities. So we have um, to look at uh, the first and foremost um, the mandate of our ministry, the Ministry of Environment, Forestry and uh, Tourism has got a, a mandate. Uh, that mandate is uh, derived from the uh, our constitution, Article 95L, and that is to look at uh, our ecosystem to maintain and protect our ecosystem and also the essential ecological processes um, and our biodiversity and by so doing we have to look at uh, not only protect and uh, put that in the hands of the Namibian people that's why we have created community conservancies community forests and uh, we make sure that the private sector plays a major role there and, and they while they are protecting that this uh, biodiversity they have to also sustainably uh, derive benefit from that mm -hmm. and and that works much uh, because that's why you see so many namibians very passionate about uh, conservation passionate about protecting of our biodiversity it's because they are deriving benefit from that and that is what we want to continue with uh, and uh, make sure that there is also uh, fair and equitable uh, benefit uh, sharing. Uh, we have um, um, enacted a law, we call it uh, Access and Benefit Sharing uh, Act, uh, which we now want to make sure that uh, whatever we have, whatever natural resources we have, um, our communities must use that and uh, no one comes from there can patent those uh, resource, natural resources and that law talks to that uh, it talks to that so that there should be some kind of benefit sharing if you come with technology the natural resources that owned by those natural resources that owned by the communities and those communities will be able to sign a contract with you that they must have a benefit sharing equitable benefit sharing uh, and that benefit sharing must be fair and equitable. So uh, if, for instance, you come and you want to harvest devil's claws, as they, we, we, we do now export devil's claws in some of the conservancies, or you come, you want the uh, naras, you want to harvest them or use them for pharmaceutical uh, uh, products, uh, whatever, UD, UDA or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So we are now going to make sure that uh, our communities have benefited um, from equitably product from got. those products and we are ready to implement that this this year we already working um, uh, we have finalized the regulations already so we are going to put that into force that law into force the other part is to make sure that uh, we continue with our activities uh, of, on, on uh, protection of our wildlife um, to prevent uh, illegal uh, 
uh, hunting mm. of our iconic species like uh, rhino, uh, elephants, and all other uh, species we have our games uh, so that they cannot be illegally hunted. And also we make sure that we put major uh, um, um, uh, surveillance on our, on our parks um, to ensure that they also maintain those uh, facilities in our parks and also to ensure that uh, communities, uh, we minimize the uh, human wildlife conflict in our communities. We know that our population of wildlife is growing every mm. year and because of that and also given that uh, also the population uh, human population is also growing not only the uh, uh, wildlife population but also equally the human population and also mm -hmm. encroachment in those uh, 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 habitats of mm -hmm. the wildlife uh, causing now conflict and because of uh, competition of uh, resources natural resources yeah. like water uh, grazing uh, and so on. Really so easy. it becomes a pro it has become a problem now. That's why we have more um, uh, conflict between wildlife and the human. Mm. So, but we have a plan for that, and we make sure that we provide some water infrastructure, and also we prevent uh, water infrastructure or uh, or, or the or property of of our communities yeah. not to be destroyed. So, in order to prevent this uh, conflict um, further, um, so on tourism, we are also working on uh, other major programs. Uh, we we have, as you might recall, that I have announced that uh, we are now looking at because of this uh, COVID nineteen, everything is shut down, especially when it comes to tourism industry. Uh, next month, we uh, have already started with that plan now to look at a uh, system what you call air bridges so that means we are going to enter into negotiation with certain countries selected uh, source countries where we have a major um, we become those that have a major market like Germany yeah, and, 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 and also and they have uh, they must have also some similar protocols and uh, similar um, uh, health measures in place so that we can allow open our borders and allow these uh, tourists to come because tourism can only survive if they are tourists mm -hmm. so both uh, regional uh, international and domestic tourists we need to revive now this is the time to start reviving uh, our, our our tourism industry so that sorry minister do i understand this correctly so this is pretty much uh, the the sort of tendency that you are seeing in europe at the moment where they say they will have dedicated areas which are cleared for COVID. And in other words, if we know that they're cleared on their side, we're cleared on our yeah. side, those, that's, those are the sort of air bridges you talk yes, about. Yes, yes, that's exactly what we are talking about. And uh, we target those countries and we, we agree, uh, we negotiate as to what has happened, what measures are we going to take uh, in this process. Um, you know, of course, uh, we, we want to make sure that things are are done safety. correctly and the safety net is put there in place. And in that way we would circumvent the sort of 14 day uh, quarantine period, am I correct? Yes, 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 we, we have to do that. We have to look at uh, all these things. What are the quarantines d done that side? Where from the, the here, the destination or from the departing point? So we have to look at that. These are negotiations now. We have to end up with countries, but the safety part must be a priority. Yeah, we so look at the economic that's the part. project that the president spoke about. Now? Yes, yes. Okay, that's starting what, as from 15 August, yeah, you would start. Yeah, we want to start doing those things because we 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 have to revive the economy, uh, especially yeah. the tourism industry that employs more than hundred thousand people. We have already lost many I mean, people uh, yeah. that uh, they have lost their jobs, so we we can't. And they, we cannot blame the industry because it is they have no money, they have yeah. no income at all. Yeah. So especially those who have no, had no reserves, those who had reserves, they try to do here and there, you know, and they see whether they, some of them, of course, they cut the the, the salaries half, and then and, and they, but some who had no reserve, that means you have to pay many things as well, not only 
salaries, uh, but you have to pay others as well. You have to pay some allowances, some packages. Just asking pay, so. on that score, Minister, um, is it so that, especially with the conservancies, they are obviously bleeding out at the moment as well, and that will over time obviously leave them with no choice but to start hunting, really, if, we, if we're honest about it. We've seen it in Central Africa now. So um, what plans does the Ministry have in place to try and help the conservancies through this time until the tourism industry has, has picked up again? Yeah, with our conservancies we have a plan. We, last uh, month, um, you, if you might recall, that uh, I announced that uh, we put up a fund, mm -hmm. a recovery fund, to make sure that we arrange something for them because we have eight, six conservancies. And in these eight, six conservancies we have more than 5,000 um, uh, employees and these are the employees most of them are game guards and some others working in uh, in those uh, lodges and so on so if we have to let them go um, and they do not have salaries that means it will they will be demoralized so and then poaching will escalate so we have to prevent that so we have now so far we have more than 22 million that we have um, uh, collected wow. Uh, and uh, definitely we gave them assurance that uh, their, their salaries will be paid. Uh, we'll pay, we'll pay their salaries uh, until the time we get to that point of uh, revival. Um, we have already signed up uh, with uh, more than uh, eight, that means only six that are left without uh, signing a contract in, in terms of uh, uh, paying uh, salaries, providing okay. allowing something for the uh, employees. That's mainly in the north now, I would say. Yeah, all the all over, all, all over, over the country, okay, so all over the yeah. country. Uh, no, I was just wondering because they seem to be more pronounced in the north. No, no, area. all over, all over the country. Because this, uh, uh, we will look at their income, their previous income, how they, and also the employment capacity, and we look at uh, what uh, the uh, those. Uh, staff or uh, employees were getting and uh, we, 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 we there are some that uh, you really have to make sure that especially those who have got uh, iconic species in their conservancies they, so we need to make sure that yeah. those game cards uh, we, we have them there we, there's no way that we allow those game cards to go so yeah, they have to be they're highly trained by now. yeah yeah they have to be there so and that is one and also we are now working on um, on on a, on a, on a um, amending our our, our forestry act. Ah, yeah. uh, so we amend our forestry act and the uh, regulation uh, when we started already doing that to strengthen measures in the forestry act to make sure that uh, the loopholes are completely closed. There are some lacunae we have identified in that and that's why you have seen people doing ABs. Some of them even just uh, stealing this uh, log timbers uh, uh, cutting illegally and uh, just um, uh, exporting. So, so is the idea there is similar to the conservancies where you said it must be yeah. an equitable solution. Yes. So uh, it's not a matter of forbidding that foreigners no. necessarily invest, but it is prerequisite that they actually support the local community and make it a yes. sustainable effort. First and foremost, uh, our decision of this ministry is that uh, we will not allow any export of any timber, any process or semi-process. Oh, okay. So that's one. The, we have already taken that decision now because it's already provided for in the regulation. Yeah. That we, the regulation number 12 uh, does not allow Namibia to export timber and process or semi-process. That means okay. you need to have product already finished in order to export because that also you know, because it angered on the on the on the scarcity of our and also the the, the our forest that we have. Namibia is a very um, uh, arid country, first of all, and uh, it it our forest most of part of, of of Namibia is desert. So we cannot afford to export because if you export, you don't add the value. So what we are doing now is that we will revive all those who want to um, have those factories revived for timber we will be able to sustainably allow them to harvest and uh, we're also going to make sure that we, we revive those uh, nurseries and community nurseries 
so that yeah, we can plant trees. Plenty, I think. We can plant trees, uh, and, and the forest, the community forest, will then do some of the work to ensure that uh, we have, and the community forest. That's how they will be able to sustain themselves. We we have to make sure that every community forest they have got factories to process those timbers, to make tables, to make chairs for schools. So we don't need there to import options, in the future. No. We don't need to import any. Any, on any of this, we can we can do that. We have our forest, and our forest can first look at our needs, and also to make sure that uh, we add value, and also we create jobs for our people. Yeah, and still maintain what we've yes. got as a we have. Yes, uh, we have we uh, have those that are coming from uh, VTCs uh, in this country from technical schools, and, so they, and they, they have carpentry. Yeah. Uh, uh, they have carpentry skills to do carpentry work. So these are the people that now we want to engage and uh, provide uh, them with these logs uh, sustainably and then they can provide uh, supply uh, these two products to schools and uh, to other uh, uh, public uh, uh, institutions and the private institutions. But returning but towards the tourism angle, I last year uh, took some time and we actually dedicated the whole issue of tourism in Namibia to what we termed the O regions, the four O regions. And um, what I discovered is obviously we keep on writing about Coca Felt and we keep on writing about Kavanga and Zambezi and Harap and Karas and all these tourism spots. But what struck me is um, I took a wild chance, uh, sometimes camped wildly, but I systematically combed through the whole of the Ovambuland region. Mm. And what I discovered is that, um, and, and I've been sort of pressing on that point for some time now, is people tend to go to Kenya to see the Maasai. But why go to Kenya if we've got own people mm. here who are different as well and who've got their own cultures and something to offer too? So is the ministry over time also embarking on sort of developing the tourism angle for, for those regions as well? Because I, when I was up there, I suddenly felt that people should come here. It's nice, it's, it's good, and there's much to offer. It's a different thing. It's not necessarily elephants and, and lions, but there's much to see, and it's, 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 a, it's a good tourism opportunity. Um, is the ministry looking towards developing uh, those four, Oshana and, and all those, uh, you know, get them embraced into the Namibian s system, especially seeing that we've got the Etosha Park right below it? Yes. No, we, we have already started doing that, and uh, you, you might have seen also now the, the community conservancies there in the north. Mm -hmm. Some of them are mostly are surrounding Etosha on the other side of the north, and also we have some like uh, Congo. We also want to make sure that we, because when you look at the roads, we, we, we developed that road with MTB, okay. uh, Omlunga Road, that mm -hmm. now traversing from uh, it, it came from Kunene, then exactly. That's Kamine, how I actually took the route from it will have to come right from Sati, to so that yeah. that uh, main road that will now be worked out. It's a um, Caprivi Highway, will link port down to um, Zambia and uh, Angola, and then up of uh, Zimbabwe and uh, Botswana. Um, we 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 have connected that Omlunga road with that. Uh, and the earth road will now also connect uh, that those uh, lodges that were built, community lodges. Um, one is already completed, and uh, two, three, four, five of them now completed. We have already uh, Ukwaludi one that was completed some years ago. Mm -hmm. We have um, two of them completed recently. Yeah, also uh, saw one uh, saw, Yeah, you saw that. We have also one a large one that uh, it's a large one that. I think in it, the whole northern part, uh, in the northeast, in the northwest, uh, there is no uh, so far a big lodge like that one. Um, even private, uh, it is a community lodge that is in the King Nehale, just from mm, the yeah, gate. Uh, it's, it's, a long, it's a community venture, joint venture with the operator. Okay. So it's owned by the community, but it's operated by by Kondwana by Kontwana. Right. Mm. So it's, it's, it's big, and uh, w with that we'll be able to get tourists to get there because we have to develop also cultural tourism that has not been really looked at. When yeah. people come to Namibia, uh, they don't look at others, only wildlife and some other scenery is 
looking at uh, you know uh, that's exactly what I'm saying yeah. is because I took all those so some dunes yeah. and then look at uh, some of the mountains and the uh, uh, in the rivers and so on but cultural tourism is very important yeah. to connect that from Kaokoland uh, from Kaokoland and coming to uh, f uh, this area where you can now see how the cultures were linked exactly how you can bring these cultures because when you look at our Namibian cultures they are linked people have been together they have been battling together you know exchanging commodities mm. uh, that time in the, in, the, in the 16 centuries and they have been doing that so and and, the, and the, those are the things that we want to see uh, and we are working with a uh, of basic education which is reform for culture uh, we we want to see to you that those cultural um, uh, villages that are in there because these are uh, community cultural villages we want them to to to, to get yeah, to get creating those commodities products so that our tourists when they come there they don't just come here from kunene they, they jump they you see cars passing because there are not, yeah. not really many products they can see exactly. there. Uh, so we want now to make sure that they can spend some time there in the area. In, in but Minnesota, well, they, they, it's an open invitation. Whatever you do, if, if you have the right people in place, please make use of us. Um, we've got this, uh, yeah. this we've decided to, to bring out the tourism uh, broadcast every Saturday morning. Very good. And the idea is to exactly make known these things. So please also use the opportunity and, and make use of us. Um, this is really what it is about. We would love to see the whole country being promoted, and we've done this for a while now. No, we are ready to do that every week. Yeah, no, we're happy Romy, to. Yeah, to yeah. <laughs> I'll speak yeah, to yeah, Romeo. He's yes, sitting yes, over there. Put up a program and have yeah. uh, do that because we have to promote our our, our industry and yeah. also our roads that we have and the importance of. Um, 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 visiting these areas. Yeah, yeah. Some people, they don't see the importance of that, but you, you learn more when you get to that. That's the thing, well, mm. the country is not only source of yeah, space. Even, 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 local people, even local people, we need to know this. Yeah. So we need to take kids there, they see, they, they learn more, even things that they, they, exactly. they, they learn in school, at school, they, they are taught at school, they will have to visualize this and they, they, they make man more, uh, they have more understanding. Minister, on a final note before we part, um, you're obviously now entering your second five-year term almost as Minister of, of Tourism and Environment, or Environment and Tourism. Um, what is it that you love most about this, uh, this post that you're filling? You see, I, I must say that I, I just like all of them. You know, I, I become passionate about conservation, wildlife, and uh, many others and, and just the protection of our natural resources and the utilization part because this is a well formed uh, ministry that uh, that now that uh, forestry has come back uh, I have to thank the president for having done that the president has thought so wisely that the forestry has to come back here um, because I was saying I had to make jokes sometimes that look you know, putting forest in agriculture is a bit of paradox because agriculture will then have to opt, to opt whether to destroy the forest in order to plant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we want yeah. food, but <laughs> we want also forest. Yeah, <laughs> so now, uh, forestry directorate was like an orphan in that because yeah. they, they, they will... They, they have to, have to look at the priorities, whether to protect, and they, and they mind you, and they, you have no, there are no conservationists there in the mm. agriculture means. Those are people who want to plow the land, yeah. and, and they want to plant, uh, you know, take the forest away and uh, clear the land and the letters. So you don't blame them. Yeah. They, they didn't understand really what it is. Now that the forest is here, and I had to thank the president for that, uh, that was decision. That we, that's why we already started the major um, uh, shift plan, uh, policy shift, shifting some of these things and making sure that things are done properly in a manner that 
we conserve our forest because it's only forest we have mm. in the areas that we have the little forest and only you know every day we are losing a lot when you go and see what is happening in those areas that we have a forest Kabango, Zambezi and there's a part that we have forest the northern part I was told that it was exactly the same when you fly going to those areas now you sit down uh, it's burning everywhere. Yeah, people are cutting trees. Seen, people yeah. are, of course, you, you don't prevent development. People yeah. have to do development, but we have to be wise. We have to make sure that we take rational decisions. Our decisions should be rational, and uh, we shouldn't be blamed by our generations to come. Like we are blaming now our forefathers. And if you look at Central North, it's clean. It was a forest. Uh, we were told, uh, you know, we get you know, tales from all the people. They will tell you that there used to be lions here, giraffes, yeah, right. elephants. Uh, now, what happened? It's clear. You can't even see anything Any there. Back, yeah. So you don't blame people because development has to be to take place. There should be development. But uh, development with least damage to environment yeah. is welcome. So you have to, when you want to, if you want to have a um, scrambled egg, you have to, of course, break crack, the egg, break yeah. the egg. But you need to make sure that uh, you don't break the egg and then everything is down. The end. So yeah. now what you need to do, and that's what exactly we are doing now in the areas, the major forest uh, uh, regions, is to protect the, 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 the forest and uh, make sure that we benefit, those communities benefit, sustainably we sustainably harvest uh, what we have so that we we don't now that we have we, we have we have now heard what happened in the central north northern regions that uh, the forest was the same as in kabango and exactly. the, so now only hangwena and the shikoto part of it has got a forest but uh, umsati oshana the forests are I gone and gone. only part of umsati on the Certain fringes, part yeah, yeah. that you have a bit of forest. So now with that, you need to make sure that it, it, it survives. Then we are now encouraging communities to plant more trees, even in areas to in the that, yeah. yes, even in the desert areas. They must we must plant trees. Every community must have that. That's why we need to have necessaries, community forests, and uh, make sure that we have mm. we, we have we have that. And that. So. No, we, 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 we are there, we are coming there. And there with the help and the support of uh, communities, conservation will be a model in Namibia for the whole world. So the world look upon Namibia as a model when it comes to conservation, not only wildlife, but uh, conservation of uh, all our natural resources, including the, uh, um, the, 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 the timber we have in this country. So when, from, now onward, and that's now when we had forestry, uh, our instruction as a top management in this is that no export of timber unprocessed or semi-processed in this country. Uh, when you see something going unprocessed or semi-processed to the port, unless they have stolen that, somebody has stolen that, yeah, yeah. or it is just they are in transit, maybe coming from Angola, Zambia, DLC, using our port but uh, I must assure the public that there will be no export of um, uh, uh, semi or uh, unprocessed or semi processed uh, products of timber here uh, it will they will be processed here so we are putting up we are now putting busy putting up uh, some modalities uh, so that uh, our communities and our p private sector who want to enter into timber processing they, they they have that because we need this product we need don't need to uh, export money in, to import this product we have if we have the natural resources here we can just use them sustainably yeah. especially to satisfy our, our needs to satisfy our needs we don't need uh, to Im import some um, timber products or something while we have here here yeah. some of them here or even tables or chairs so we can use ours here well, that brings us to the end of the interview. Thank you very much for making time again. And Welcome. hopefully we can repeat it sometime Welcome. down the line. So he will make up a calendar and then we can do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Ja, wie Sie gesehen haben, der Minister hat einige Ideen. Ich finde es wirklich erfreulich. Was mich am meisten gefreut hat, was, was man auf dem Video vielleicht nicht so hundertprozentig erkennen kann, vielleicht ja doch, ich bin mir da nicht sicher, das liegt an jedem Einzelnen. Was ich schön fand, war, als ich ihn gefragt habe, was er an seinem, an seinem Ministerposten besonders schätzt und was, er, was ihm Spaß macht an diesem Posten. Und äh, dem einen oder anderen von Ihnen wird vielleicht aufgefallen sein, äh, wie die Augen dann plötzlich anfangen, hell zu werden. Und, und da ist eine gewisse Be Begeisterung, die mitspricht. Und das hat mir sehr gefallen. Ähm, ich finde es immer gut, wenn, ganz egal, Fehler, keine Fehler, ähm, wenn, wenn jemand der so einen Posten besetzt, wenn der Freude an der Sache hat, dann, dann ist die Hälfte schon gewonnen. Und natürlich wünscht er sich einen Sack voll Geld, damit er allen helfen können, äh, kann. Aber ich bin mir auch ganz sicher, dass er sein Möglichstes versucht, jedem zu helfen. Und so liegt es auch ein bisschen an uns, ihn an der Hand zu nehmen und nicht nur zu warten, dass er immer äh, voranschreitet, sondern dass wir eben selber auch mit ein paar Initiativen und Ideen kommen, so schwer es auch sein mag. Ja, vielen Dank, dass Sie sich das ange angesehen haben. Und jetzt haben wir, kommen wir zum Schluss. Wie immer haben wir dann nochmal ein Foto der Woche. Schönes Foto, natürlich unten am Name Brand aufgenommen. Das war ein Foto, das Manfred Laborn uns vor einiger Zeit mal zugesandt hatte. Also ich, das ist halt typisch, wie Namibia so ist. Ne? Neugierig sind die Tiere ja alle, vor allen Dingen, wenn da länger keiner vorbeikam. Aber vor allen Dingen, weil die da unten auch geschützt sind. Die Gemsböcke sind da nicht so scheu. Und äh, ja, da kann, wollten die natürlich wissen, wer hier gerade ankommt. Ich finde es ein schönes Foto, vor allen Dingen auch mit der Vater Morgana dabei. Ja, schönes Foto, vielen Dank. Auch Sie dürfen uns wirklich gerne immer mal ein Foto zuschicken. Ich bin mir ganz sicher, dass wir das gerne in dieses Programm mit einbinden. Und es braucht ja nicht immer nur ein Foto sein, man kann es ja auch bei den Destinations irgendwo mit einfädeln. Ich danke Ihnen fürs Zuhören und Zuschauen und sehe Sie in einer Woche. Musik